What's up, lifelong learners? This is your boy, Mr. Hang, and today we are going to learn how to do this. So I'm going to show you this first. So look here as I remove my uh, bug bite right here from my neck and this pimple and these scars right here and some scars here. So this is my before and here is my after. So I remove my bug bite. I remove a pimple that was here. I remove these scars to make things just a little bit better. Now I'm trying to not make myself look overly done, but I just want to make it look a little bit better. So the more natural it looks, the better it looks. All right. So this is what we're actually going to do today. What are we learning? How to use retouching tools and crop tool on photop.com. Why are we learning it? To be able to clear up blemishes, remove red eyes and crop for profile picture purposes. When students, uh, how do we know we learn it? When students are able to enhance an image of a person's face and crop to be used as a profile picture on social media. So, you know, you could charge people to do this for them. I'll make you look better for your profile picture. Pay me this. You never know. So at the end, you should be able to submit your before and after picture. And I showed you my before and after. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we are going to create a blank canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all this or remove it. And then I'm going to create new file new. And then I'm going to go to uh, name this practice profile pick. Okay. So practice profile pick. And then you're going to click on screen. You're going to get full HD. Now I'm going to crop this square crop, but I, there's a reason why I want you to do full HD. And then uh, make sure that the background is transparent and then you click create. Okay, so now you have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio or 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to find an image of myself that has a, or an image of somebody who has a lot of blemishes that you are able to edit and then submit the before and the after. And uh, I should be able to see the difference in their face after editing. Okay, so I'm going to go open up by clicking File, Open, this picture of myself. And then I'm going to use the Move tool. There's a better way of doing this, but I'm going to use a Move tool. Click and drag, hold it here on top of Practice Profile Pick, and then drop it right here like that. Okay, now if yours don't fit well, what you want to do is go to edit, free transform, and then you know you can hold shift and you can free transform whatever you like so that you can fit your image on here. All right, so I'm going to push check mark right there and do a command Z here. I've already fit mine nicely like that. And then I'm going to do a command plus so I can zoom in right there. Okay, so the first tool I'm going to teach you is the spot healing tool and the left and right bracket are what makes it bigger and and smaller okay so this is the spot healing tool right here click and hold that tool you'll see the spot healing brush tool all right so i'm going to uh it's like right here i'm going to make this bigger by pushing the right bracket key and i'm going to make it smaller by pushing the left bracket key okay so you want to be just big a little bit bigger let me zoom in here okay a little bit bigger than what I want to remove okay and then I'm gonna click once or click and move this mouse around to get the area that I want to remove and then I let go and then it'll automatically look for an area that looks like this skin tone and replace that one with that area so a bunch of math just happened right there and I'm not gonna go into the details it's just like looking for a bunch of data points that look the same as this data uh, and um, it knows what to what to remove because you know we programmed it to know what to remove and then it just removed it and replaced it with skin tone that looks very similar to that skin area all right so and then I'm going to make this smaller here and I'm gonna remove this pimple right here like that I just click once let go and then it just calculates the bigger the area you want to remove the more calculation it's gonna take and then I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger oh, actually that's too big I'm gonna remove my scars here by clicking and dragging over my scars 
So it's going around looking for data points that are similar to these. And I just click over my scars here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, there you go. And then click, click, click and drag, click and drag. And see, I have removed these scars on my cheeks. And I can do this all day long. Okay? So for me, I just want to remove this right here because it looks a little awkward to me. And the skin tone is a little splotchy. So I just click and drag around a little bit. So it looks more... I guess it looks more natural. You can tell that it's edited because you're watching me right now. So the next tool is uh, that I'm going to go over is the patch, oh no, the healing brush tool. Now the healing brush tool works a little bit different from the click and hold spot healing brush. Okay, the spot healing brush, you click and then this thing will try to heal whatever you're trying to remove. This one requires you to do this. The first thing you're going to have to do here is hold option. All right. Notice I put option slash alt to select an area and then you can use that area to paint it wherever you want. So here we go. So let's say I want to get my eyeball right here. Okay. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. All right. So when I click on this, I hold down option. You're going to see this change into like an X. Okay. Like an X. All right. All right. It changed into an X and I'm going to click right there. Okay. And then I'll be able to come over here. See, so I got the eyeball. I'm going to click and drag around, and then I can see a third eyeball on my forehead. Now, you wouldn't really want to do this unless you're really messing around. But if you look at this, what happened here is you take this area right here that you want to use and cloned it right there. And then on top of that, the brush is trying to figure out like, all right, well, we got some hair here, so we want to blend it in with that color, kind of make it look natural, you know what I mean? And um, that's what's happening. Of course, you're not going to do this, but I just wanted to prove a point, okay? So then what I do instead is this. All right, I want to click this area of the skin, okay, right there. And I'm going to take that area of the skin, and I'm going to move it over here to remove this mark on my face. Bam. Looks very natural. It looks like I didn't even edit it at all. Okay, so let's say I want to remove something like right here, like this part. Okay, so I'm gonna go look for an area, hold down option, and then you click to get that area, and then I'm gonna paint it over right here so that way it looks very blended, right? It's, it's blended in so well. Okay, so I'm gonna do it one more time. So again, I'm gonna hold down option to copy this skin tone right here. Hold option, see the cross, click. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paint that out. And I'm gonna paint this out and I'm gonna paint that out. Okay? So once again, you have to hold option. You have to click, get your X, click, and then see here's the eyeball again. Again, I'm gonna put it right here just to prove a point one more time and re-explain this because it's not easy to understand it will copy this area of the eye and then put it where you want to paint it to be and at the same time blend it in as best as possible so that it looks natural. Now obviously this does not look natural but you saw it look natural earlier when I just select an area right here and remove that mark on my between my eyes. Okay. So I'm gonna Command Z this. I'm gonna move on to the next tool. Again, hold Option and then click to select the area you want and then just let go of Option and click. Okay, that's the, the Healing Brush. Now we use the Patch tool. The Patch tool does the same thing. So I'm gonna click on here, hold it down and get the Patch tool. And so the Patch tool does this, okay? And I'm, again, I'm gonna use my eyeball, all right? It's weird, crazy editing, but I'm just going to use my eyeball. I'm going to take my eyeball and I'm going to move that area to my hair. So what's going to happen here is that area that I selected, I know this looks really freaky. Don't freak out. All right, it's okay. I'm going to drop, release, and then what happens is, you see that hair right there? It's trying to blend in this area with these skin tones and this area right here to look like nothing happened. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'll do it with my mouth this time, or with my nose, with my nose. Click and drag around my nose area, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nose, and it's going to get patched by my hair, 
okay? And the nose goes away, and then the software is going to try to understand like, hey, where does it look similar? Like, and then I try to blend it in to make it look natural. That does not look natural. But you can see my hair right here, that strand right there is right here. And you see all this hair looking thing, right? Okay, so that's not the point to make it look weird. I just wanted to prove a point. All right, what's happening? It's being patched by the area that I moved it to, whatever that it selection was. So, but here's how we really use the tool. Let's say I have a, uh, an interesting curve right here. All right, I don't want to click and drag the healing brush. I'm going to remove this gray hair. I'm going to click and move it around this gray hair. And then I'm going to close my circle or my, my figure. And then I'm going to drag that to a place that has like dark hair. And I'm going to replace it and bam, it looks so natural. You see? Again, here's my gray hair. I'll click around it. All right, using the patch tool. And I close my circle or my selection and I move it to an area that has dark hair where I don't see white anymore. Bam, it has been removed using the patch tool. Okay, even this area right here, like if I want to remove this interesting spot right here, I can just drag that down right there, keep the lines going, see how this line keeps going, and then I remove that. All right, so that is the patch tool. Whatever you're trying to select and move it to, it gets replaced by that area and then blend it on top of that to make it look natural, okay? And then we are going to do content aware, okay? Content aware is going to be something like this. You take your nose, or let's do my mouth this time. Let's take my mouth, okay? Content aware move does this. Same thing as the patch tool, so make your selection, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click and drag up. The mouth is going to move to my forehead, okay? And then the mouth area is gonna be blended when I let go. Okay, I'm letting go, and it's gonna take a little bit of time because there's a lot of computation that's going on, plus there's the internet and so on and so forth. So yeah, what happened was, the mouth got moved up there, blended it to kind of blend in with the hair. Of course, this does not look right. And then I got my nose over here that's being replaced in that area because the skin, the, because the, <laughs> I don't want to sound nerdy, but because of the mathematical values are very similar to this area around my nose, it got moved and replaced here. So it basically got cloned. And then you see my cheek right here, my, my dimple area got moved and, and, and replaced and duplicated here and here as well from the dimple area. See that? This is freaky, all right? This is like not what you want to do unless you're trying to make a horror movie or something. I don't know. Do I do Command Z to undo this? But the point is, let's do my nose this time so you can see. My nose is going to get moved down to my neck all right, and then the nose area is going to be replaced by some skin tone or the mathematical values that are similar in that area. So the bigger your selection, the more time it's going to take for it to do some computation. So let me just zoom out right here and I'm going to move my entire body here. So it's going to take a little bit of time and effort to finish the calculation. So if you have a slow internet, that might affect this. If you have a slow computer, that might affect this too. Okay, so I select myself. So it is going to take a little while for it to move me over here and patch the green area. So I'm gonna try to just show a little bit of my face right there. And then this area is gonna be replaced with green as best as it can and move everything over to that side. So I'm hoping everything will be replaced by green right here. So yeah, it's just a matter of sitting here waiting and doing a bunch of computational stuff. It's like, oh, there's green here, there's color here. I wanna move all these pixels over here and I gotta take these pictures, co pixels, copy it from here and then put it right there. So you're gonna see this change in a few seconds. Let's count sheets because I'm sleepy. All right, see, it, it, there's so much work that this has to do that I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna wait. All right, so 
If I click wait, it would have figured it out eventually. All right. So what happened was I got moved over here. I, I clipped too close to my ear, so I, got, I didn't get in my entire ear. And my body moved over here, and I got some green here. Uh, this didn't get moved very well, but you get the point, right? Like, look, out here, it looks pretty natural. Like, oh, okay, what happened there? Okay, so that is what happens when you use the content-aware move tool. Stuff gets moved, and then whatever that place is empty now, it gets filled up with content-aware fill or the values that are similar that will replace this and make it look as natural as possible. Okay, now there's a use case for this. We're not getting into that yet, but I just want you to understand the tools. So your job today, I'll do Command Z here, was only this. Oh, and then I got one more thing. I have the red eye tool. So obviously red eye tool is gonna remove the red eye. Uh, I go and remove the red eye like that if I had red eye. Just click and just drag around, you'll remove the red eye. But I don't have red eye, so I can't really demo that. <laughs> so go find a picture with some red eye and do this. All right, so after you're done with all that and we went through all the tools, now you're gonna use an image of yourself, remove your blemishes, save a JPEG, yourself or somebody else that has, or maybe a beat up old picture because someone actually did that. And then remove the messed up part, the blemishes or the scrapes or the scratches. And then you're gonna name it a profile pick practice uh, before and after. And you're going to upload the before and after to Google Drive and submit link of the profile pic on Canvas. Okay, but before I do all that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to square crop this because I want to introduce you to the crop tool as well. So the crop tool is right here. Here's the crop tool. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out by doing command minus and I'm going to uh, click and drag, get a square, center it just right. And then I'm going to put a check mark right there. I'm going to go to my original. I'm going to cut out a square about that much. I'm going to drag this over here. And then I'm going to crop that one right there, check mark. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this as a JPEG. So export, so file, export, JPEG. And I'm going to save this JPEG. It's saving right there. And then I'm going to go to my edited version because I removed my scars and stuff like that, remember, and my bug bite right here. I'm going to do the same thing. Click File, click Export, click JPEG. And then I'm going to save that JPEG. And then I'm going to go to my download folder. Okay. Where's my download folder? All right. What's going on? Oh, okay. Then I go to my download folder. Okay, there it is. All right. I'm going to go to my download folder and I'm going to name it. Oh, I downloaded it. Oh, I got my before and after right here already. So I'm going to delete that one. The new one was this one and this one was the before. So this is the before. So I click it, rename it before. Okay. And then I have the after, where's the after? It's like profile picture. Yeah, there's the after right here. This is the after. I'm gonna right click, rename, and I'm gonna do after, okay? And then I'm gonna go find it. I hold down command to click, and I'll get the before and after, and I'm going to go to my digital photography and filmmaking one, two, unit two. I'm gonna make a new folder called thumbnail project. And then I'm going to go into that folder and make a new folder called Practice Profile Pick. Go in there, and then I'm, I'm going to delete these old ones here. All right, and I'm going to drag and drop these two in here, and it's going to upload. Should not take nine minutes. Come on. The internet must be really slow right now. Yeah, it should be like instantaneous. So, and then you're going to click back to your thumbnail project folder. You're going to right click this practice profile pick folder, get the link for the folder, not the link for one file, the link for the folder, because then I'll be able to see both files. When you copy this link and make sure anyone with link can see this, make sure it's a viewer, not editor, and then click on OK or and then take it to uh, take it to canvas, go to your module, 
scroll down, go to profile pick, practice profile profile pick, click on that, and then you'll be able to submit your link right here. And then when you, um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's that's how you do this. Okay. So I want to make sure that I read through all my instructions here. We did everything here. The tutorial will be linked right here now because I'm done with the tutorial now. Okay. So um, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you submit your work on time and uh, any tools that I use here to make this uh, production or my, you know, recording is linked in the description below. Don't forget that uh, you uh, like, share and subscribe and anything that you buy using those links, I'll be able to get some commission money to improve my classroom because things break all the time and sometimes I got to spend my own money, but now I do YouTube on the side, you know what I mean? Your boy got to replace stuff and I want to spend my own money doing this. So thank you very much for the support for those of you who are buying down with the links. All right. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. So we're going to say goodbye now. Get your hands ready. Smile. Rock. Paper. Peace. Let's hang out again in the next video.